Almost everyone I know would love to reduce the impact they have on the environment. And I'm sure you feel the same way. I began to understand that it needs to feel good. It needs to be practical and it needs to be affordable to really empower people to make a difference. Anne-Marie Bonneau put this beautifully. We don't need a handful of people doing zero waste perfectly. We need millions of people doing it imperfectly. And this got me thinking, how come fashion is so behind? I wanted to contribute something to the growing community of sustainable producers. I asked myself, what would I want to buy? It would have to be something beautiful and elegant, yet versatile, something that I know will last and stay with me through the years. This was my dream. My friend Anja and I got straight to work on the first prototype. The key to perfecting the pattern was finding the right material. A premium Tenso viscose mix sourced from sustainable forestry was our ticket. Using very little water in its production, it is super durable, takes color beautifully and is easy to look after. It's all 100% recyclable, from the tensile stitching to the curls and buttons. Drawing inspiration from workwear patterns, we have designed pieces to be the go-to choice in your wardrobe. Clean lines and simplicity are key. We wore the prototypes day in and day out, always making small adjustments until we loved every stitch and fold. It's important to us to produce in Europe, so we chose an ethical family business in northern Portugal. They're as excited as we are to get started on production. The concept and design is ready to go, finished off with beautiful upcycled zip bags for shipping. We would love for you to support us at the start of our journey and can't wait to send out clothes that you will love to live in day in and day out. It all starts with you. This was actually not as, as bad as I thought, listening to my own voice. <laughs> um, yeah, so my name is Hannah and I set up this company called Silfa a year ago and I started out just with a, a simple online shop for sustainably sourced clothing uh, to try and test a new business model and make sustainable fashion more accessible to people and um, the workwear uniform that you've been seeing in the video is actually now this ultimate minimal um, outfit that we've designed um, and um, we are offering it with a 24 month service guarantee so you can send it back in for repairs, redyes and recycling and um, once you send it back to us and we recycle we're going to make new yarn from the old um, uh, pieces of clothing to make the product really, really circular and yeah that's the concept and I'm going to talk you briefly through how I ended up doing this, who I am and what the plans are for the company. Um, so I'm from, I'm German. I grew up in Berlin, but I studied here in London and um, I studied business and finance and I was always a bit confused about why I'm actually doing business and finance. Everybody I went to university with wanted to become uh, a banker or a consultant and I felt like that wasn't really my kind of, um, industry and then um, I actually threw uh, some uh, funny circumstances ended up working in a startup. It's a bit too long to not tell this story. Um, it was actually quite a funny one. Um, but I ended up working in a startup and I felt like wow this is really an industry where I can make a difference and be creative and still um, you know have an impact because I felt like if I was going to like go into politics or do, I don't know, I, at some point I thought about becoming an actress actually. <laughs> um, I thought I wanted to do something that, you know, would actually be about creating something. And I felt like the startup industry is perfect for that. And um, that's why I then worked for seven years in startup sales. Um, and uh, then went into startup sales consulting and that's actually when I started researching the concept for Silver 
And um, I approached the whole topic in a really naive way. I never worked in fashion before. I just wanted to create a proposition that makes sustainable fashion more accessible. And um, I don't know if any of you work in startups, but the approach is always you start with a problem and you don't start with an idea. And that's how I went about it. So um, I just took a very naive approach. Just asked lots of people, you know, do you want to buy sustainable fashion? Are you doing it? Uh, send out surveys and stuff like that. And, um, and then over two and a half years, actually, I went through this process of um, defining what the proposition should be. So it's, it wasn't my idea. I think it's an accumulation of lots of people's ideas. Um, can you? And um, this slide is about the core discovery I made on my journey. Because um, I w wanted to do a startup in sustainable fashion because I myself wanted to buy more sustainably source clothing and I wasn't doing it so I was like well maybe there's a solution to that um, and then I thought in the beginning well can we connect people more to the producers and make it more social and surely that will make everyone buy the better products and then the more I looked into it I, I just got extremely confused I don't know if any of you work in sourcing fabrics and stuff like that it's, it's just so confusing um, you know, fi the the production process is just insane. Like how many people are involved, and um, yeah, it's, it just got more and more confusing. At some point, I realized, wow, actually, we have a really different problem that has nothing to do with the production side of things. The biggest problem we have is actually that we produce so much. Um, so that's how we get back to this number. Six million tons is actually the amount of clothing we consume per year in the European Union alone. Um, that still includes the UK, of course. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> that one. Um, yeah, so that statistic I just thought was insane. And um, I've been working with some local charities in Berlin, and they told me just them, they get like 16 tons per week. Um, and they can't sort through it, and the quality of the clothing is so bad, um, it's actually like kind of like special waste. You know, you cannot even recycle it. And I realize that lots of people aren't aware. I was certainly not aware that this is a problem. So that's how I then went on the journey of developing this concept um, to um, actually change the whole system of how we consume clothing. And um, that's how I came up with this concept of actually offering, can you just go, um, offering a service guarantee with um, our pieces so that you can repair your stuff with our help and uh, also recycle it in the end. And if you wear your clothes three times longer, you actually reduce your environment environmental impact by two thirds, which is massive, right? So I was like, wow, this is so simple and so effective. And that's how, how the concept was born. Um, you can just go through, yeah. Yeah, so this is the timeline of how I um, developed the concept. So actually, I think this is super interesting. I don't know if any of you work in startups or want to do your own startup, but I feel like people never talk about the very long period before you have any success. Because um, it's not like, ooh, you have an idea and then boom, you know, everybody wants it. That I think never happens you actually go through a really long period where uh, you're validating the idea and you're not sure and you're developing the concept. So I started in October 2016 um, with a startup course here in London and then the developed the concept over two and a half years until the launch of the crowdfunding campaign, which is now in May 2019. So two and a half years of trying to understand you know, what the consumers want and how to um, yeah, how to refine the concept. Um, and this is the vision for the company. So now we have 
this one minimal outfit and we offer it with a service guarantee to extend um, its lifespan and make it super easy. Um, so we call it the circular suit. And then the next stages of developing the company as planned are to extend the service guarantee into subscription offerings. So I think it would be really cool to test out if people want to not pay for clothes upfront, but pay over time. So you, you know, you buy the suit and then uh, you pay just a monthly subscription instead of everything up front. So that's something I want to test next. And then the vision for the company would be to have what I call wardrobe as a service. So imagine everything that you need to do with your clothing, recycle anything, you know, buy the right washing detergent, all that kind of stuff we would s do for you. Um, so that's my vision for the concept as it stands, but I'm sure it's going to evolve and yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, this is not our product. I just found this on the internet, but I thought it represents really well my vision for what I want to create for people is to, you know, be individuals and um, be themselves, but sort of be freed from the idea of having to buy a lot and um, just be this generation of people who um, you know, make a statement for positive change. Cool, thank you so much. And yeah, uh, she showed the jacket, but yeah, it's the entire outfit yeah, that, you, that you're having yeah, on exactly. Kickstarter right now. And uh, yeah, when you have a break, you can have a chance to look better at all the, the designs of our speakers that are displayed here and over there. Cool, so now we're going to welcome Priya, uh, founder of Kilatir, and I'm going to let her introduce herself. Thank you. Hello, guys. Um, so my name is Priya. I own my own sustainable streetwear brand. Um, so this is just something to ponder about. Sustainable fashion is not a trend, but the future. Um, so I started up about two years ago. I've worked in the industry as a designer for many brands on the high street that I'm sure all of you guys shop at. Um, if we could get the next slide. Um, so I was kind of caught up in the whole churning out designs, designing like 24 styles every day, made out of polyester. And it came to a point where I was like, what am I giving back? to the industry is just like a repetitive thing, like design, design, polyester, polyester, so it's bad for the environment. So I stepped away from it and thought, what could I do to make a change in the industry rather than contributing to what's going wrong in the industry? Um, so I set up, I found this fabric, which is bamboo, um, and it says organic bamboo, and it's really good for the environment. Um, it, it doesn't use pesticides, um, it grows faster than any other plant, so it give, if we can get the next slide, sorry, um, excuse me, I'm a bit nervous because I haven't done this before. Um, so here's a few um, facts on bamboo. So bamboo is a type of grass, not a tree, which explains its speed of growth. Bamboo, bamboo is naturally organic, so it doesn't require pesticides. Bamboo absorbs greenhouse gases, so it releases 35% more oxygen into the atmosphere. Bamboo fabric is moisture absorbent and it's soft. You can have a feel later on, but it's a really good fabric to use. Um, if we get the next one. We also use old clothes and give it a second life. So we buy vintage um, denim jackets mostly and we upcycle them to make them new. So this is really popular in my brand. So people are always like emailing me, sending me their garments and I upcycle them, give them a new kind of lease of life um, rather than them chucking it away. So. Um, Yes. <laughs> so these are just some facts of what we can do to change um, and some facts about how the industry, what the negatives of it are. So you've got water pollution, the use of toxic chemicals, high levels of textile waste and poor working conditions and ways to promote sustainable fashion. Because I always get asked the question that how are you helping and I feel like the, the top people at the top, like the high street, are not giving enough information to you guys of what you can do to change. So I'm always asked the question like, how can we change? So there's just simple things that you can do. So just ask, where are your clothes made? Assess your closet. Can you upcycle anything? Can you sew anything? Or can you draw on it? Can you express yourself some, some way else by using what you've already got? Wash smart. Um, 
repair and shop less and buy well. Um, yeah, so I've got some product at the back of this room and here, so have a feel and ask some questions later on. But thank you. Thank you. So now we're going to welcome Maria, <laughs> founder, founder of Mari. How do you pronounce it? Ma Ma do you say the two A? I would say Mari. Mari. Yeah, Perfect. <laughs> After you. I don't know if it's better with the microphone or my voice is As Italian, I thought, I'm loud enough, no. Um, I'm, I'm very thankful to Valentin for having me here today. Uh, just earlier, I was speaking with a lovely lady, uh, which is a mathematician here, but has a huge, huge interest in uh, fashion and sustainability. She sews in her, her own clothes and stuff like that. And she's always been very creative since a young age. And um, I think I connected with her so much because me too, I was super creative since very, very little. And my mom used to look at me while I was drawing, doing crazy stuff, like um, even like building up furniture and stuff. She would be like, Maria, it's all very beautiful, but please study. Like, look, there's mathematics, there's all this and that. So I was like, okay, I need to study, I need to study. Plus I need to do all this that I love. And when it came to going to uni, I had to pick economics because my mom, of course, didn't want me to end up in an artist's job and uh, be all like, mom, please send me some money because I can't make it to the end of the month. Um, so I went into <laughs> economics and then I went into uh, brand management. Uh, during my uni, I was working all the time to pay for everything as well. And uh, I come from a background of aviation. So a lot of planes, aviation is also like super polluting. I breathe in a lot of stuff. Uh, that didn't give me any, <laughs> you know, <laughs> sensation or whatsoever. Um, so yeah, so I came to London and now I think this is my sixth, sixth year here in London. And uh, this is where I'm from, actually. Uh, I'm Italian, I'm from Sardinia. This is a gorgeous, <laughs> gorgeous place. Um, and I grew up here, I grew up on a beach, and it's, it's as beautiful as you see it here, plus, you know, all the waves and sounds and stuff. And as Sardinians, we grow up like having a huge respect for nature. It's like your second mom. Um, you need really to care about it. Um, yeah, so thinking about this and being here in London, I decided to start Mari. Uh, Mari is sustainable swimwear uh, because I was, yeah, I grew up on a beach and I, want, I was like, I want swimwear. I want swimwear and I can't bear that swimwear is like either like super cool and beautiful, but then it comes from something that I don't approve, so my values are not there, or it has all my values but then it doesn't look good at all, you know, and it doesn't, I don't know, I, I feel like a Michelin man, you know, when I wear it and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I didn't want to compromise on style, on, on my values, and I decided to create Mari, uh, which is made 100% from sustainable, uh, luxurious Italian fabrics. Um, um, to do this, I started a <laughs> collaboration with an initiative of divers, uh, Healthy Seas. Uh, they, ha they are all vol volunteer divers. Uh, they operate in the Mediterranean and the North Sea. And what they do is collect fishing nets. So they uh, give their professionality to the cause uh, and dive down deep into the sea, risking also their lives because it's, uh, it's very dangerous. Uh, and they use their own oxygen to fill up these uh, um, these, these bags uh, with air and bring up huge fishing nets, tons and tons of, uh, of waste. Fishing nets are made, uh, it's a sort of plastic, they're made of nylon, like any other swimsuit is made of nylon. Um, and when they stay in, in sea, in contact with saline water and uh, UV lights, they disintegrate into microplastics, which we can't do anything about. This is something that we created, and I thought this is a great, great thing to like, 
I don't know, repurpose something that we created and is really damaging into something maybe beautiful and nice and that it has a purpose. Um, so yeah, this is uh, the Conscious Collection. Um, as I said, it's made from regenerated uh, fishing nets, recovered from our seas around us. Go on. Um, so uh, it's a very limited collection, just a few pieces. Uh, we have uh, the bikinis, uh, we have also the one pieces. They are all like of he very high quality. Uh, you can see only the whites here, and for the girls that are asking, they're all doubled, so you don't have any transparency. <laughs> I know the boys don't like this, but still. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, because I also think on a design perspective, uh, as you can see, they are, yes, classical, but maybe with a bit of an edge of modernity, because we don't need like to be super edgy, I think. Just a bit is enough. Uh, and they're also a bit classical because they need to be worn again and again, uh, year after year. It's not something that you wear for just one season. It's something that, it's, it's a swimsuit of very high quality that can last you six, seven years. Um, and at the end of its, uh, of its life, you can put it back in the industry and can be regenerated again and again for like infinite times with the fabric not non losing uh, performance or quality. My Italianity comes into <laughs> the swimsuit as well because to produce them I had to um, research a lot. Uh, I agree, I don't see her, <laughs> I agree with you like going into the supply chain of fashion is a bit of a nightmare. It took me seriously like nine months of my life 24-7, even in my dreams I was doing this looking for someone that could do what I was asking. The industry is very well, well organized and it has its rhythm uh, and they don't want to change. So everything is done in a way, it's more functional, that's how they want to do it. And I was there, no, I don't care. I want to do it my way because I think this is possible. And I encountered many people that were like, no, 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 you can't do this. It's impossible. It will never fit. It will never, like, no, what is this fabric? And I had to try, try, try again. At the end of it, I found this beautiful, <laughs> beautiful people in, uh, in the north of Italy. It's a, it's a small family business. And uh, they are doing this since like three generations. So I met all of them. It's like, oh, you look alike. <laughs> cool. Um, and they are very passionate about their work. Um, the first time I met them, they already, like, I mailed a law, I called, blah, 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 this is my project, this is what I want to do. And they already met me with something ready. Like, at that point, you realize that people are proactive, that they want to do something. They love the idea. They were like, yes, we want to be a part of this. They are they work for, like, big names, Armani, Cuccinelli, Vivian Westwood as well. And I was like, okay, this is great, it doesn't really seem true, like, it's just me, is that all right? And they'll be like, yes, absolutely, we want to do this. So I'm very happy about this, it's like the highest quality of a swimsuit that you can find around. It's produced in Italy, it's like 100% transparent. Uh, these people are very passionate about their work. I am passionate, I hope, I hope it shows. Um, and I launched last year, um, and... Uh, I think I'm very lucky that I got uh, nice, good attention um, on on the idea and on the designs. So we've been on um, e looks like a, a good uh, sustainable uh, magazines, uh, but also something big like Women's Health, Stylist, Marie Claire, um, EasyJet as well. I was very surprised for <laughs> that. <laughs> Guys, cool. <laughs> Let's do something about your, your engines. Um, and some other small, uh, small uh, uh, luxury magazines. Um, I have to apologize now uh, for for the next uh, the next slide because maybe it's a bit graphic, but I felt that this was needed because you know fashion is like all beautiful, we're all stylish, it's luxury, but we need to remember why we do this, and this reminder needs to be there all the time. So this, it's not. 10 years ago. This is not the future, hope not. This is in April, and this is in Italy, and it's like 
on the coast of Sardinia. Sardinia has pristine nature. This is a sperm whale, and the whales, dolphins, many other little creatures come to our waters because they are so pure and clean. And this broke my heart when I found it. 22 kilograms of fishing net and waste in its stomach. I was appalled. I think we sh all should be. This can't go on. My friends always like, you know, and make fun of me when I say like, you know, it's made from fishing nets recovered from the ocean. They'd be like, yeah, what's gonna happen when you run out of fishing nets? I was like, unfortunately, this is not the issue. And I wish I could run out of fishing nets. Um, for the future, I hope, uh, you know, like the situation will change quickly. And uh, I, th I see fashion not only as repurposing something that we created that doesn't have um, a circular life. I see fashion as something that is grown and not sewn anymore. So something that can be created and can transform and can become something else and it has a new life and it's continuous. Um, I always say that I'm just one person and I'm just a drop in the ocean, but together, all of us together, we can make waves. We can go a long way. Thank you.